Hey guys, it's Narrative Tarot. I changed my shirt because <laughs> I feel like I just felt like I was not <laughs> gonna come on here again. It's like I got the same sweater, same shirt. It's like, I think after 2020, no one really cares anymore. No one's really trying anymore. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to like get that. Okay, I just don't want anybody distracted by what's behind, even though it's a lot of stuff behind anyway so this video is going to be about the most used decks for 2021 and not um not in that like i studied them in great depth or i found books about them or any related topics related to them it's just i felt like their energy was a little deeper and required me to go a little deeper and they wanted to be used to open up a lot more uh, as opposed to some decks that were good for like daily readings like I use one deck pretty much all year for um, daily reading to the okay tarot and I guess I'll do a small little video on that um, about kind of hip style Marseille um, very minimal decks and how I see them because I actually really do like minimal decks now and that was that's like the only deck that I have that's kind of like that um so um that was a deck that I used all year but I'm not someone who studies um decks and I'm not studying symbology and um geometry and language you know like hebrew letters or greek letters i'm not that person and i'm an intuitive reader um i kind of feel like the intention of the card at that time comes through and it doesn't really matter what the intention of the person is it's the card um it's kind of like the card has the intention from the person who made it and then like the actual spirit that ends up kind of residing in that card when you get it so I kind of feel like the reading kind of transcends the message that the person that created it was trying to do and they have their own messages and that's what I read and that's why I kind of like don't read other stuff also I'm just kind of lazy but um I do think that in the future I will be reading more but not necessarily like necessarily like languages and all these philosophies and stuff like that I just there's a lane that I'm going to go into eventually and I'll go into that but I'm not too interested in um, doing deep really deep deep study I think it's just I'm an intuitive person and I'd rather spend my time focusing on my intuitive abilities and my ability to sneak out what the cards are saying as opposed to learning like definitions and things like that not that that's not helpful not that it doesn't add a different dimension to what you're saying but i don't know if i my dimensions would be broadened or my perspective would be broadened by doing that and i think that's something that people have to ask themselves if you don't feel like your horizons are broadened because of that then maybe don't do it so um that's that so there are five decks. Um, I don't know how long this video is going to be. It's already like four minutes, so let's get into it. The first is the Nicola, Nicoletta Ciccoli Tarot. So for me, this deck is nice. I like it. Um, it's actually more recent. I got it last year. I've gotten tarot from like 2017 onward. But this one was something that I got last year. Early last year, I believe. Definitely before I quit my job. Um, so, it's a standard tarot deck, 78 cards. There's no bonus cards, anything like that. It has all the suits, it has all the major arcanas, minor arcanas, things like that. Um, people find that this deck is kind of tricky um, in that because it looks so childlike people think that it's something that's like oh it's just like a frivolous card and it's like not the case it's actually quite serious and quite direct and quite honest and i find that this deck really helps for people 
with blockages and I kind of feel like it encapsulates the world of like objects and spheres and dimensions um, that's so weird but one of the examples I can give you is I like to do Reiki as far as like learning about it and stuff like that and I scan my body from time to time I don't do it professionally just yet but I like this deck because I feel like if I want to know a card about the inner world if my chakra were to have an inner world this is a deck that really I feel understands how to portray it and I think it also understands how to convey when something's wrong. I feel like there's a little bit of, if you were to get transported into this actual world, right? There's a little bit of silence in the card. And I don't know if people understand that because I, I, I don't know if I can really describe it. It's not like you get in the card and you see her and she's talking to you and stuff like that. I feel like there's silence. like you can't interact with the world i don't really think you can interact with the world you're you're someone who can see into the world and you can walk through the world and you can path find but you can't interact with any of the people what that does is removes you and creates kind of like an objective field where you can see what's going on and you can see the dangers and you can see how everything interacts it's not necessarily a bird's eye view you're very immersed you're just not the person who's immersed um it's kind of like when you have another example try to explain this when you have like movies that talk about um like there was a like, like a movie on like hallmark about a woman and i guess she like got into a coma or something like that and she was reconciling her life and there was like an angel next to you and she was like revisiting the past and stuff like that that's what this deck is like for me that's what this deck is like it's you're watching something happen it's not happening to you in real time but you're watching something happen and I find that for people who like Reiki you would probably like this or any sort of energy work because it's energy isn't seeking to draw you in now in my mind i'm getting flashes of it can draw you in but i feel like specifically for people who do body work chakra work reiki work it's not going to pull you into where you get overwhelmed which some decks could do where you're feeling overwhelmed sensations you are an observer in this deck and um that's really helpful and i think it also there's something about protection in this deck it's a very protective deck it's not like a mama bear protection but i think it there's a veil there um and i like that it's a veil there you can see stuff you can reach out um but don't touch it don't try to interact too much with it it's like very helpful for people who find that their energy merges with others very easily and they can't shake it off which is something that is a problem for me so if you're doing any distance reiki and stuff like that instead of calling forth the person use the deck instead and see if that helps you use the deck to get all the chakras and then focus the energy on the image that you see and transport the energy like that and see if that helps you guys so that's the first deck and it's just been something that I find fascinating so who's getting so it's not necessarily um, most used in that I did a lot of readings but it was just most used in that I felt like if I wanted to do chakra stuff I felt like this was kind of helpful yeah I felt like it was helpful I don't use it really for readings I use it for my like, chakra Reiki kind of stuff so it has use in my collection it's just not a traditional use that I guess you would want so there's that this is a deck that I use personally this is the Santa Muerte Tarot Book of the Dead this deck ended up being lost for a minute like so 
I like took it to work and then I brought it back and it wasn't a bag when I found it. And like, I couldn't find it for a really long time after that. Like it disappeared for like some months. I was like, did somebody steal this deck? Like, like I was really like um, uh, upset about it. Cause I was like transporting my deck. So I was just like, did someone take it? Did I like drop it? Did I lose it? Did somebody like, what's going on with this deck? Like, why is it gone? <laughs> I was just like, what the fuck happened to the deck? Um, and so I was just like, I guess I don't have it anymore. I guess I lost it. Um, and then it showed back up. <laughs> I was like looking through a bag one day and then I found it. And I was like, oh, there you are. <laughs> but it was like hidden somewhere. And this deck, um, it's a beautiful deck. It's chatty. I wrote on my Instagram that it's akin to like those overprotective but like intrusive, like comical, like family members, like you gotta love them. Like your mom's annoying, but you gotta love her. And it's like my big fat Greek wedding. If anybody has watched the movie, that's how I feel with this deck. Like kind of intrusive, kind of comical, kind of funny. Um, I've done a little bit of ancestral work with this. I find that it's pretty good for that. Um, it's more like if your ancestors want to talk to you. It's not like any real, not real spiritual work, but real shadow work focused on you. It's more about what they have to say to you. It's not really like we need you to work on certain things. Like if you wanted to have a conversation, but you're not like clairaudient or like you're not naturally like a medium, I feel like you could use this deck and it would help communicate because I mean it is a deck of the dead so like it would help um yeah if you need advice it's helpful if you need a good fuss out it's available you know it's <laughs> there for you um I also felt like I connected I did a few animism classes and wound classes but I felt like um ancestors that I'd never met came through as well with this deck um, and in my meditation, but with this deck, I felt like I could trace family like lines um, a little bit or ask more about the people that I didn't know, um, you know, where they came from or where they were. Um, so it's really cool. So this was more for me and it was only showing up like part of the year. <laughs> But again, like I said, it's not necessarily the time, but it's like the depth of connection that I ended up having with it. So next we have the Tarot of the Alchemical Magnum Opus. This is very cerebral as a deck. I'm not, <laughs> it's like, oh God. You gotta have a like a fucking philosophy degree to like figure shit out on cards and just like, you know, you gotta have like degree in like numerology and astrology. Just like, can you just please have like a simple, basic <laughs> thing? I will say, um, I looked at what's his name, James Feeney's video, and I liked it. Um, I liked how he described it. I liked the art style of Robert M. Place. I had another deck and I sold it because I just felt like I wasn't connecting to it. I felt like it was very busy in compare like by comparison so I was like well here we go somebody can take that so I enjoy this deck I don't use it for myself this deck surprisingly is a deck that I actually find is very helpful for ancestral work for people but it's because it's so cerebral because it's very, I feel like this 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 deck is very good for patterning, finding patterns within people's psyches, people's family lines, and um, not necessarily offering solutions, but making a concrete, like detailed list of what people's families have have dealt with. It's almost like it reads like a um. You know how you maybe watch medieval shows and they have like family sagas, but like 
in my mind, I'm looking, thinking of the commercial that they would portray and they would have words like a family divided or lines drawn, um, you know, things like that. It kind of plays off of that. It kind of feels like that to me. And it's very much about keeping bloodline, the secrets of bloodlines, the secrets of the inner workings of families, like when you watch the Tudors or the think about Medici or something like that or Medici, I don't know, I can't remember how to pronounce it, but that's the vibe I get from this. It's very family orientated, but almost in a very matriarchal or patriarchal way. The voice is like very strong and very centered. It's like, it's not left or right. It's kind of like it bestows it bestows its blessing on you. It's like father to son, mother to daughter. Now you have the keys to run the business or now you have the keys to run the, the empire. That's what I get. But it tells you different patterns that are in your family. It's It actually also can tell you, from my experience, different psychic abilities or spiritual abilities or spiritual karma that your family has because it's so interested or its main focus for me is bloodline so it's very interested in your bloodline and very interested in helping you uncover that and figuring that out so I really liked it I've done a few readings for other people with it and I just it was accurate they told me that it was pretty accurate um so I like it it's reliable it's not so esoteric you know like light it's quite serious it's quite to the point it's quite it rattles off everything so um, you know it's not gonna be harsh it's just it's it I feel like it exhibits a little more of a masculine kind of energy even if you're a woman it's very much the matriarch it's not the daughter it's not the like distant cousin in the corner it's like the matriarch speaking its truth and what the truth is going to be for the family line and this is what happened like an elder telling a younger this is what happened this is the pattern this is the story so next we have marguerite peterson i like this deck so much i do i really enjoy this deck like people sleep on this deck like a lot this deck is just on some other dimension shit like <laughs> i really enjoy it i enjoy it i enjoy it i enjoy it it's very abstract but it's very like i kind of liken this to like um trial by fire some sort of like fire element mental burning away it's kind of like if you're in the middle of a movie it's like the two-thirds of the way in the movie when you're really approaching the battle scene and then like that period where um you are leading up to confronting the villain or the antagonist or whatever you're in the battle all hope is lost and then you reemerge from the fire it's that space and time um, I really feel like people who like this deck or find themselves drawn to the deck would be really interested in maybe the hero's journey um, really interested in cycles in general um, geometry particularly geometry that's related to like time and how people process life cycles um like the spiral would be one i just find it really cool really really cool it's very inspiring it 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 inspires you to rise up above what you have been to seek rewards beyond your safe zone and that's why i'm saying the hero's journey it just it requires you to go beyond yourself and beyond the bounds of what you thought hope was justice injustice death birth transformation those ideas that you know you pass a phase 
and you end up on the other side with very different disposition to what you um, you previously thought was known or you, you not disposition but what you previous, previously knew is no longer or it's added to or if you were a theorist you now have the experience to back it up or debunk what you thought was true so I like it mental space I like it I like it a lot it's not that I used it so much for like readings I do assign this with like Neptune and the Sun it's very much I am here I know what I want there's a core essence and it's someone who has a lot of pride um, they cannot be taken they cannot be destroyed um, they exude and they shine so this is someone who could be considered an underdog or someone who just stands in their power and they're unshaken throughout the entire movie that is their life um, if they do get knocked down they get right back up again and I I just like it there's something pure about it Oop, they're knocked down okay. last one is the wild unknown tarot so I am really on to this I wanted to get the archetype one um, I feel like I like the unknown tarot deck a little bit better than the other one with the spirit animals not that I don't like that one but I feel like I know that this deck deals with a lot of deep darker issues if you're someone who is afraid of Saturn I feel like this is a Saturnian deck if you have issues with Saturn if you have issues with growing older with loss abandonment rejection but but specifically um, loss and grief people leaving your life whether it's through death or relationships being lost or um, relationships where things are unsaid and you have to kind of like fill in the gap and um, things like that kind of Neptunian almost so but I feel like it's Saturnian it's kind of like it triggers the abandoned child in you um, so that's what this deck is like for me and I find that it's great for, I think if you're someone who doesn't understand or doesn't jive with the idea of time um, and cycles, or you have a really hard time processing that, then because it doesn't have people, you're forced to focus on how time affects other beings or what we perceive as time affects other beings and how um, they process it because I feel like it's a lot more about how they process things and how if you were to connect with nature and nature spirits how they would tell you their experience of time and of life is and it comes from a very it doesn't come from a space of the animal is beneath you they are in many ways on your level of consciousness if not above your level of consciousness because they understand the world in a way that you do not um, so that could be the animal that could be the stars that could be the trees the plants everything they have their own consciousness and they have their own story to tell and if you're not comfortable with non-human contact things that are around you that have wisdom but can't speak in the same way then you wouldn't find this deck comfortable and if you're not comfortable with darker themes that play out in the world not just the human world then you may not like this um, because you know the animal kingdom or the natural world is a very cruel place it's full of joy but it's a very cruel place like think about a tree getting hacked to death but not being able to cry out like think about that um, there's a lot of pain and loss and and communication happening it's just not the communication we see or we understand or we acknowledge as legitimate sometimes and so it's a very Saturnian deck that a lot of things in life have lessons that um, that are learned it's just we don't 
ever notice that they are learned because we're not that. We're not a turtle. We're not a rabbit. We're not a snake. We're not an eagle. We're not, you know, a pen. We're not a laptop. But all of these things are having experiences of their own. Um, I took an animism class, so I, like, was into it. Um, but these things all are having experiences of their of their own outside of us with each other um and then you know just within themselves right so um it's just it's it's a deck that's pretty heavy and i think that if you aren't into those sort of themes that's what i pick up from this deck if you're not into those sort of themes that it feels quite dark quite heavy quite quiet um it's non-communicative and that's kind of the point i feel like with this um and so you may not get it because it's not a human deck it doesn't have any humans in it right it's not a human deck and i'm not going to say it's not for humans but it's not for humans who want a peer-to-peer -peer relationship and that the peer is a human right so that is all i'm like are you done talking are you done talk i'm looking at the deck are you done talking about this because like i don't have that much time on my, on my phone <laughs> so um that's all i have to say those are my five decks i had to crown again five decks that i enjoyed in 2020 and got kind of the most use or the most insight of where they are supposed to be in my life and I hope you enjoy I look forward to understanding more about these decks and more about the other decks that I have in my collection because I want to use more of them and I want to actually buy more too so all right thanks for watching guys bye